Hi, my name's Cy Horton and I'm an engineer for our 3D documentation team here at Faro UK. During this tutorial I'd like to show you the new features of Faro Scene 6. We will now take a look at all the new features of Scene 6. The first thing you may notice is that we have a new icon. So if I double click on that you'll see now how quick Scene 6 is to load up. I'm actually running a trial version at the moment so I'm just going to click OK to that and then you'll notice that we have a completely new interface in the background which will go through step by step but also one of the first new features is that if you are connected to the internet and a newer version of scene is available be it an interim patch then the system will go off to the scene server check for those new versions and ask you whether you want to update your license so it means there should always be an option to work on the latest version of Scene, either the latest patch version or the latest version if you have an active maintenance contract. I'm just going to click no to that. So first off, if we take a look through the interface, we've got two interfaces which will flip backwards and forwards between. This is the new interface. So along the top you can see a series of tabs. None of them are active at the moment because we haven't got a project open. Over on the right hand side we also have access to the apps, so if we click on the apps icon we can start to load in our apps into the new interface. Just by clicking on here it will load in the app manager and you'd load apps in the normal way. We then have a series of settings, so in here very similar to in the classic interface in scene we can set our language and our units. We can also set our project folder, so in here you can see that I have a scene beta folder where I've just kept everything nice and clean for now. I've tried to keep my data for scene 6 separate to my data for scene 5.5. Also in here you can no longer copy and paste into this dialog box. In order to add multiple strings that are separated by a semicolon you simply click on the select folder icon here and it will keep adding in folder locations. So if you've watched previous tutorials I tend to work on my local hard drive which is a solid state hard drive for processing all files. I will then archive those onto my D drive which is a SATA drive that could be your server but I also want to see all those projects in my project selector. As we scroll down we can enable a location for any log files that are created during the use of scene but we can also set our temporary data folder up the key here is you need to have sufficient disk space in order to have a decent temp folder but again we'll come onto this as we go through. If I then go onto the import option we can choose what units we're going to use for importing data. We then go down to processing. I'll come onto processing very shortly but what we can do now is when we process data we can get the system to automatically register the data after processing. We then go onto registration now this new interface is pretty much aimed at doing top view and cloud to cloud registrations. If you're working in a traditional format with targets and maybe survey control then we can switch back to the classic interface which we'll go on to very shortly. So in here when we're doing an automatic registration instead of performing a two step process of doing top view and then cloud to cloud we can get the system now to do a top view and a cloud to cloud one after the other. We can choose whether we then want to do a cloud to cloud registration if we do a manual registration. Again we'll cover that when we go a bit further. We can choose which sensors we want to use for every registration. We can also choose what our average subsampling is for cloud to cloud and for top view as well as our reliability thresholds for top view. And down at the bottom we can choose various values for our new registration report. To edit these we simply click in the dialog box, type in the new value which could be here, could be 4 mil, and over here we could have 8 millimeters, and then just click the tick. The same thresholds apply for overlap and color coding. So very quickly in the registration report we get visual feedback of whether a registration is good or bad. And finally we go down to views. We have a new smart navigation mode which we'll go through. I can invert my mouse wheel and we can set our default movement speed. 
we can also have an acceleration factor built against our navigation speed by using the shift key. We can choose whether we want super sampling on or off, which for sparse points or low resolution scans, super sampling might show more gappage in our scan data. And down at the bottom, we can choose to have clear view, gap filling or no effect. Another new feature which you'll see on the screen very shortly is the ability to have an environmental map. For this particular example, we're showing a cloudy sky. We've also got a sunset in there. All you need to do if you want to create your own is have a decent resolution image and the resolution must be twice as wide as it is high. Or if you don't like the new environmental map, you can flip back to the color gradient. So you remember that when I first started, it came up with a 30 day license setting. Up at the top here, if I click on license manager, if I have an active maintenance contract, then by clicking on the update licenses, the system will go off to the license server and should update your license. If at all you have any issues with this, please contact support at farrowurope.com or your local support center. And also, if you want to switch back to the classic interface, I simply click this button here and it will flip back to a scene 5 style interface. I'm going to leave it in this interface for now and we'll flip back a little bit later on. Now just one thing to note, if in any of these dialog boxes you modify anything and you can't remember what you changed, you can simply reset the view settings in any of the tabs. I'm going to go back to my main window now. At the top we can create a new project or we can open any previous projects. What we also have is this project transfer option. So now if I put my SD card into my machine, you get this message that we've always had asking us to transfer the data directly from an SD card. As you know, if you've got multiple projects on the SD card, it will bring them all across. Now what we have the option to do is if I click yes, it will then go and look at that SD card and it gives us here the list of all the projects on my SD card. If I only want to transfer this scene 6 one down here, I simply untick each of the others and it will only transfer this scene 6 project. In transferring it, we can automatically get the data to process, which I'll cover very shortly. But it means now bringing the data into the system is a lot easier. If we cancel that, if at all you accidentally click no to that dialog and you want to transfer the project automatically, all you have to do is click on the project transfer icon, click on the select folder icon here, go and find your SD card, click OK, and then straight away your projects will come in. This could also be beneficial if you have multiple SD cards or multiple devices plugged into your machine. Again, I'm just going to click cancel on here. So first off, I'm going to create a new project and call it tutorial and click create. As soon as I do that, you'll notice that all the other icons along the top become active. It also tells us the path to where we're saving things. We can add a project location in here so we know exactly where it was. We can also come over here and change the image for our particular project. At the top we have the project history. We've done nothing yet so there'll be no history in there. And we can also wipe the project history. Or we can simply close the project. Down at the bottom we can add in a description but you'll then see a series of steps that we need to follow. Before following any of those steps, we need to bring some scans into the system. So rather than use the SD card transfer option, I'm going to go to the import tab, and over here it's telling us to drag and drop files to import. So I've already got some scans open on my other screen. I'm just going to pick three scans, drag and drop them into the window, and it will import those. So here we'll see the traditional folder structure over on the left hand side, and take note of this new icon. It looks like a broken circle. That is telling me that I have unprocessed scans. If I go back to my project tab now, at the bottom we have two red lights. First is the processing tab and second is the registration tab. Now what I can do here is press on the process option. Now what this is going to do in scene 5.5 a workflow may have been to drag and drop the scans, to then go in and apply color, to then go in and apply a scan point cloud. That would have been a three step operation. First is to drag and drop and save your scans, which then applies the default filters. 
The second will then go in and manually apply the colour to your scans. And thirdly, we go in and create a scan point cloud to improve the navigation and visualisation within the system, i.e. we didn't need the scans loaded in order to do anything with them. Plus it means if the scans are not loaded, the RAM of the machine is not being full, so it gives Seam more power to perform operations. This now is a one-stage process. Your perception may be that it's a little slower, but in reality it's faster because it's doing everything in one hit. So it means that you can drag your scans in, press save, go off, do something else, and when, by the time you come back, everything's happened, rather than having to sit there and wait for the system to do each step. And here you can also see it's giving us a percentage of what we've actually done. So that took no time at all to process three scans. So those three scans are now saved, the color has been applied, and we've now got scan point clouds. So if I click OK to that, you'll see my image in the background. You'll see that the processing has been done. I can then flip over to the Explore tab and straight away we'll see the scans on the screen. So if I set the center of rotation on those scans and then I rotate up, the next option you'll see is the Environment Map. So this is my cloudy sky. So I can zoom in and have a look at the scans and you'll see that they're not registered because the scans are all over the place. Also in here you'll notice this circle appears on the screen. If I don't do anything, then the circle will disappear. This is our new smart navigation mode. So at the bottom here we have view modes. We're set to be smart navigation. We still have examine, flight, pan and walk. To the next we have perspective and orthographic. We can also fit the view as before. We can also look from the different predefined views. We can set our center of rotation on our scans or we can use the last camera position icon to toggle back to the last camera position. But with the new smart navigation mode, you'll notice that my icon changes depending on whether I'm in, on the edge or outside of this visualization wheel. So inside, we're in a fly mode. If I'm within this banding here, I'm in a roll mode, similar to how we used to go to the edge of the screen. And if I'm outside, I'm in examine mode. So it means from a navigation perspective, it's really cool to navigate around your point cloud whilst having some visual feedback on the screen to see where you are. If we go back to our project tab, which is our main screen, we can now see we've got a number of scans, the recording time of when we did it, and we've also got whenever we've done any modifications to those scans. The next tab we have is the registration option. Now I could click over here on the registration tab or I can do it from here. If I click on registration it takes me directly to that tab anyway. So it's adding intelligence as to where you've got to click next. We have an automatic registration option at the top. Over here we have a manual registration which I'll cover very shortly. And then we have our registration report which doesn't exist at the moment because I physically haven't done a registration. Also on the far right we have the options to add, disband or delete clusters. As mentioned, this main interface is primarily all about doing a top view and a cloud to cloud. You may remember in the settings up here, when I go to registration, the registration method is going to be an automatic top view and cloud to cloud. So if I go back, click on this perform automatic registration option here, click start automatic registration, the system will now go in, it will look at those three scans, it will load the necessary data that it needs to, it will first perform a top view registration, so it's looking at the scans from the top and looking for common vertical surfaces. When it's aligned those scans, it will then go straight ahead and perform a cloud to cloud registration, and as soon as it's done that, it will come back and tell us whether we've had a pass or fail. Again. The perception might be that it's a little slower. The reality is it's faster because there's no human intervention with having to first go in and do a top view and then go in and do a cloud to cloud registration. And straight away, you can see here that it's gone in and done the registration for us. So as before, we would do a visual representation and look at whether things are aligned, which they appear to be here. Over on the left hand side, we're looking at the 3D view 
or we can look at unique color which in effect is the correspondence view same as before if we wanted to look at the correspondence view in orthographical perspective we can do or we can simply look from the top view down zoom into an area and then apply a clear view mode so as we zoom in that clear view mode becomes more transparent and we can start to see the overlap between elements to see whether anything is misaligned or we can simply just fit the view or we can flip back to 3d view and turn off unique color we can also apply clipping boxes here directly because we've automatically created a scan point glaive over on the right here we can start to look at the report so this is our new report system in here we're getting a mean point error of these three scans and a maximum point error so here we've got a 2.44 millimeter error and we've got a minimum overlap of 66 percent it's telling us down here what settings we used for cloud to cloud and over on the right hand side we have the new registration report so as we float over any of these gray boxes our gray boxes are our scans so scan one is linked to scan two by a 1.8 millimeter mean error and it's also linked to scan three by 2.9 millimeters similarly this one here scan two is linked back to scan one by 1.8 millimeters and so on and so forth down at the bottom we can also start to see which scans are linked to which and how many connections they have so scan three only has one connection and scan one has two connections so here we can see it's linked to these two scans by which error and by which overlap we can select and copy and paste all this data and we can copy that into Excel so with the data selected if I just use Control C on my keyboard go into Excel and do Control V to paste it in here you'll see all the data has come in in rows and columns so we can then modify this to suit whatever we need to and we've got our registration information here in a report which we could stylize with our own company logo and so on and so forth so it's a nice easy way of getting the data out of scene into a tabulated format we go back into scene now if we're happy with the registration then all we have to do is click on yes followed by finish if we're not happy with the registration you click no and then you can go in and start to create more clusters or start to do some manual registration in this instance I'm going to say yes and I'm going to click finish the data there is then registered so if I go to the explore option it opens me up instantly in 3D I can then set my center of rotation on the building there and start to navigate in and around the building to see exactly what we've got so there you can see three nicely registered scans so you will have noticed a little bit earlier that when I'm in explore mode I then have a whole new series of icons along the top what we've done is simplified these into groups so here we have our annotation option for adding in external pictures or external links we have our measure points which if we click on the link below we can measure between points or objects either on the screen or in the physical tree structure on the left hand side we then have our polygon selector tools below which we have our blue polygon selector and our blue brush selector bearing in mind that we're working on scan point clouds now we're not working on FLS files if we wanted to work in a planar view then these other options will become available then we have our selection tools which we had up on the top dialog bar in the classic scene 5 interface so we can do new selections add to subtract or intersect we can save screenshots we can create our viewpoints simply by clicking on create or toggling next or previous we can create clipping boxes automatically by one click or by three clicks to a surface we can create virtual scans as before and we can create our project point cloud which I'll cover very shortly at the top we also have one more tab which is our export tab so if I click on that we can export a project by exporting a project we either export the LS proj file or we export the recap file again as before if you right click on a scan it will export that as a recap file if you right click on a cluster it will export that as a recap file also up here we have a new option to export unordered or ordered scans in previous versions of scene we typically worked with our FLS files the FLS files are in an ordered format 
because they are created in what we call a row and column database which has order to it hence on export we can actually apply subsampling so if I click on ordered then in here we can apply as an E57 file ordered data by applying a subsample to reduce the point cloud size now because we're primarily working on scan point clouds if I choose unordered that would be the same as export scan point cloud in scene 5 again there's not the option to order it all we can do is turn off each scan in a separate file if we now go back to the explore mode you'll notice that I've got various bits of noise in and around here so to get rid of that noise I use the polygon selector and I select the polygon I start to trace around an area double click to close and you'll notice that that area has highlighted yellow I can right click and do selection and do delete selected points but now we have an option to invert that selection so if you invert that selection it will select everything outside of that area or if I want to return back to that I invert the selection again and then to delete it it's just a case of right clicking doing select deleted points so to make those changes permanent all I need to do is a quick save put a note in to say deleted points and then click OK this will now go in it will open the FLS file which you can see it doing over here it will delete the points from that and it will then reproduce the scan point cloud so as soon as that's done we get confirmation on the screen I click OK and I can move on and start to delete other points in and around this particular building so those are the very basic principles create a new project process the data use the automatic method for registration which does a top view and a cloud to cloud check the registration visually on the screen and also in the new report come in use the polygon selection tools to select an area and delete it now what we'll do is look at the manual registration methods so if I go back to the project tab and I'm going to close this project we'll then create a new project and call it tutorial 2 and click create I'll go to the import tab I'll pick another three scans drag those in click OK I can either then process from here by right clicking and going process scans or I can go back to the project tab I'm just going to click process on those there and let it do its thing so that's now complete while we're in this dialog box of the import you'll notice that we can also import external objects import images or we can import any annotation data from WebShare Cloud had we shared this data to the cloud if I toggle back to my project you'll see that my processing has been done on these three scans and I get my preview automatically generated from one of the scans if I go to registration now rather than perform an automatic registration I'm going to perform a manual registration so if I click on the manual registration icon so this is a little bit like the split correspondence view in C5.5 and the freestyle scan placement option under the freestyle menu in here we can sort by name by recording time or we can sort by best match as to which the next available scan is in the list we can start to use the find options in here for finding scans by name if we know which scans need to link to which one or I can select scan 1 in the left and scan 2 in the right and at the top we can start to mark targets the system then tells us that we need to mark more identical targets in both scans because we don't have any at the moment I can either mark points, mark planes, mark spheres or mark checkerboards now this is very similar to the scan placement option for the freestyle so here because I've got some spheres I'm going to use this sphere expand option to select on my spheres just by clicking on them so I'm going to pick three spheres over here and I think I've got another one over here on the cabinet that I'll pick and then we'll go into here we'll pick the same ones again just clicking on the spheres as soon as we've got more than two it comes up and tells us that we've got those and links the two together so here it's rename the spheres I can then click register and verify and it will go through and register those two scans together based on those three locations once it's done that it brings it up on the screen for a quick visual check we can look at unique color again or we can say we're satisfied with the result of those two because they visually look correct and go on to the next pair now we've done number two 
so we'll link number two with number three and do the same thing again so we'll go in we'll use the mark sphere option and mark some spheres so in this scan here I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to make my picking a little bit easier I'll mark the sphere over there we'll pick this one over here this one down here because we can see more than 50% of it and this one here and then we've already picked these ones here so we'll register and verify again when it's done we've satisfied the result so I'll click finish and then when it's done that it then comes up and says the manual registration was completed successfully so it's put those scans together roughly and then do we want to start the optimization which will then go through and it will do a cloud to cloud over the top of those registered scans so exactly the same as we've worked with three star data we give it three positional locations to locate each scan and then we optimize that location with our cloud to cloud registration now that's done we can see the three scans have been registered we can look at the report for those scans and here we've got a mean point error of one mil it's telling us which scans are registered to which if we're happy we can click yes click finish go to the explore tab and then we've got our three scans nicely registered on the screen so we can use a combination of both against clusters or we can just do automatically everything as a top view and a cloud to cloud what I would advise is if you are working with spheres more in the survey control way of working then I would do that in the classic interface rather than in this new interface to add to that as well if you are doing very complex cloud to cloud registrations in here in the settings as we're modifying the cloud to cloud and the top view settings these are being applied globally to every registration that you do if you're used to using cloud to cloud you'll notice that sometimes you need to tweak these settings based on individual clusters to do that again I'd switch to the traditional user interface so whilst I'm here if I click on that icon it will toggle this project back into the classic user interface so here you can see everything looks very similar in the same location as it always was over on the left side now you can see that we have got a scan point cloud denoted by the number three if we right click to do export we now have ordered or unordered so unordered is your scan point cloud or ordered is your raw FLS files in the new user interface we also have the smart navigation mode which on the screen at the moment indicates a circle with a thick banding we can actually modify that to be slightly different under the tools and the options and navigation tab here we have the smart default navigation mode on as always or we can change which mode appears inside the circle so by default it's set to fly but we could have examine mode inside the circle which means fly mode would be outside also we have what we call zones so I had a thick banding around the outside of this circle if I change the zone to be fly and examine and click apply then you'll notice in the background here that that thick banding has gone so I've now only got two possible options inside is fly outside is examine or if I want it back I just change it to that option there and I've then got the role functionality as well so if I don't have that on then my role functionality disappears so I tend to leave it on click apply click OK if you want to return back to the new interface you can either do so under the view interface and toggle to the HTML interface or we have an icon up here simply clicking on that will toggle back into the old interface we'll go to explore mode and we've got our options there or we can go back to our project and check that everything has been nicely set up so we process three scans we've got one cluster registered to one millimeter the last option we have is to create a project point cloud if I go back to explore mode I can either do it from the project screen or I can come in here and do it if I go to the drop down and you if I go to the drop down menu and click create firstly it's telling me I need to save so I'm just going to click OK click OK to that and then it comes up with a few new options in here so the aim of the project point cloud is to create a single spatial database format of all your scans in doing so we can eliminate duplicate points along the way and we can also apply color balancing where we have several scans meeting now what we can do 
is we can also apply a distance filter to the scans to get rid of unwanted noise. We can also homogenize the point density by a set value. And two new features here are for closing surfaces and full color detail. So closing surfaces will start to make your point cloud look more realistic in the project point cloud view. And I'll show you a couple of examples of that that I've created earlier. Also, full color detail is really good if you're working with very low resolution scans on site but you need high quality imagery back in the office. What you will find however is because of the computing power required to close surfaces across multiple scans it may take slightly longer to create but the results are far superior to that in previous versions of Faro scene. Also full color detail does require a large temporary cache folder. The temporary cache folder is not saved afterwards but scene does require a decent amount of space in order to work. So if we click on that full color detail option there if you haven't got sufficient hard drive space then down at the bottom scene will physically tell you the amount of space required and what space you have available and when you're ready you just click OK and it will go off and it will combine these three scans into a single project point cloud where it's going to close the surfaces and apply full color detail. So what I'm going to do now is open up a couple of project examples for you. So here I've opened up two projects, both the same, but one done in scene 5.5 and the other done in scene 6. So what you can see on here is a project point cloud that's been created and I know that because the create icon is grayed out. And as I start to move here you can see that the project point cloud drops off so we start to get transparency and lost points in here and as soon as I let go down at the bottom it loads in the relevant number of points. If I then toggle over to scene 6 here and do the same thing now when I start to move you can see there's virtually no drop off whatsoever so the navigation keeps the quality of the scan on the screen at all time and the graphics are absolutely superb which means from a navigational perspective if you've created your project point cloud you could be in front of a client showing this off in this level of quality in CNLT for instance. The next option which is full color that was in the project point cloud means I have to load in another couple of scans to show as an example so I'll just load those up now. So now what you'll see on my screen is on the left hand side we have scene 5.5 on the right hand side we have scene 6 we have two identical scans. If I go into each scan and look at the properties under the scan area in scene 6 and in the structure over here, go into the properties and the scan area here, we can see that these scans or this scan has been done at 1 over 32 and 4 times quality. So that's a point spacing of around 49 millimeters at 10 meter distance. And you can clearly see the difference on the screen. If on the left hand side I start to zoom in, my point spacing is very sparse. So what I can do here is zoom into the area and because it's closed to surfaces and it's applied full colour, whilst we've scanned at a very low resolution, from a graphical perspective we've got absolutely perfect colour. So the result here means that you could get away with scanning at low resolutions but still have the data in a graphical format for creating presentations and movies using the Video Pro app. You have to be careful though because it depends what you're doing with the data. Obviously on the left hand side we've got a very sparse point cloud which you can see it's a 1 over 32 scan so it's a 49 mil point spacing at 10 meters. If that's sufficient for the kind of work you're doing then fine you can still have the graphics but if it's not you might need to up the resolution. But it means that now from a graphical perspective you can do some absolutely wonderful presentations in the later version of Scene 6. So that shows you the graphical benefits of using the Project Point Cloud in Scene 6. I'm just going to close 5.5 now, or maximize Scene 6. I'll turn my structure view back to be pinned so it's there permanently. And then what I'm going to do is toggle back to the classic interface over on the left hand side. And just finally over here now, because we're working with scan point clouds, if I right click, we no longer have the ability to load a scan. 
which is a benefit because if I go to planar view that will physically load the scan in so we'll get the green icon here and what I used to find is that sometimes you'd load a number of scans you then press save you close the job down that job might have been on the server next time you go into it because the scans were loaded scene has to load all those scans in or you start a registration and you've left your scans loaded and it'll be slower but now if I load a scan into planar view as soon as I close that scan it unloads the scan from the RAM of the machine if I load it again then it will instantly load in the scan and we can start to work on it again we've got all the tools up here that we've had before so just to reiterate if I was doing a target based registration I'd pretty much do it in the classic interface but then I could also go into the new interface if I wanted to do some bits but all the settings from there also apply in here so your project point cloud is exactly the same with exactly the same settings I'm just going to show a couple more small things and to do so I need to open another project so we're back in the original tutorial project that we started off with which was the three scans that we'd linked together and now what I'm going to do is drag in a fourth scan into the classic environment the first thing you'll notice is it doesn't have a point cloud against it if I just press save and then OK it will save that data and filter that data to add it into this particular project when it's done if I click OK I'm going to toggle back now to the new interface and we'll look at the project screen and here you can see it's processed three scans but this new scan here is unprocessed if we then go back to the classic interface and say for instance we just wanted to view this scan in a 3D view if I right click on it and go to view 3D the first thing the system is going to tell me is that the data is unprocessed and it's in a legacy format so we first need to process that data before we can actually view it if I just let this run and then we'll look at that data in the 3D view that processing is now finished so if I click OK and then we've then got this particular view here which if I fit the view we can see this scan 04 in our view if I then toggle back to the new interface we can see that we've now got four process scans we've now got an amber light on our registration because we need to add in that new scan into our registration so we'd go through the registration process again another thing to highlight is when we have actually done a registration the scan manager is automatically locked when you confirm that, that registration is good so it saves you having to forget to lock your clusters before you then move on to the next cluster to do the registration the last and final thing I want to show you is a more complex registration report so to do that I'm just going to open another project here you can see a larger project it has 16 scans in I've already done the registration so if I click on show report from the project home screen we'll go in and look at this particular report as we scroll down we can see that I've got two clusters inside and outside and our color matrix is fairly simple I can look at the overlap between those two and start to toggle and highlight over these to see that I've got a 59.3% overlap between the two clusters or if I click on full that will show me the full report in here to show me what overlap I've got and which scans are linked to one another now at the moment I've tweaked my settings in here so I'm just going to go back to my settings go back to my registration scroll down to the bottom I'm going to reset my registration settings and click reset so once we've done that we can see we've gone back to the default settings we then go back into our project go to our report go to our full report and now you can start to see that scan 04 is linked with a green light to scan 05 so it's 4.4 mil but this scan over here which is 09 is starting to get colorization against it because it's got a 19.3 millimeter error and scan 01 over here has got a 9.5 millimeter error so very quickly in this graphical environment we can start to see what's doing what also we can start to see which scans are linked to which by which connections by the numbers here that about covers the new features of scene 6 we can toggle backwards and forwards between the new and the classic interface depending on what methods we want to use or how we want to work but hopefully you can see that the interface is now very streamlined and the new graphical input is superb to give you high quality point cloud representations
Thank you for watching. I hope it's been of use and please feel free to watch out for forthcoming movies. These will all be published on my YouTube channel so please feel free to subscribe. I will also send out notifications via my Twitter account or on LinkedIn or on the laser scanning forum. If you're struggling with any aspects of scene I would encourage you to use the knowledge base at faro.com. All these tutorials are linked to key cases on the knowledge base plus a lot more tips and tricks. Thank you.